welcome to Biology Bites, Immune Response Part 1, with Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi. So how can we define the term immune response? Well, the immune response is basically the way in which the white blood cells respond when pathogens enter the body. OK, so surely the body has ways of preventing the pathogens from entering the body in the first place? Yes, that's called the primary defence. It includes the skin and mucous membranes. Let's start with the skin. The skin is the main primary defence. It acts as a physical barrier that blocks the pathogens from entering the body. The skin also produces chemicals that are antimicrobial and can lower pH, thus slowing down the growth of pathogens. The mucous membranes protect body openings like the mouth, nostrils, ears and genitals. Some membranes secrete mucus, which is a sticky substance that traps pathogens and contains antimicrobial enzymes. Are those the only primary defences? Those are the ones that you need to know for your exam. But a few others include the antibodies in the tear fluid protecting your eyes and the wax lining of the ear canal that trap pathogens. What happens if the pathogens dodge those defences and still gain access into the body? That's when the immune system comes into action. If pathogens get through the body's outer defences, they can be destroyed by phagocytes, which come in two types. Neutrophils and macrophages. Exactly. Neutrophils have a multi-lobed nucleus and are short-lived. Macrophages are larger and long-lived, but they are both made in the bone marrow. But how do phagocytes actually work? Well, when a pathogen invades the body, it is recognised as foreign by the chemical markers on its outer membrane, known as antigens. The cytoplasm of the phagocyte then moves around the pathogen in order to engulf it. A lysosome then fuses with the vacuole containing the pathogen. The digestive enzymes in the lysosome then break down the pathogen. OK, so what about lymphocytes? Lymphocytes are another kind of white blood cell that come in two types. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Exactly. B lymphocytes are made in the bone marrow and mature in the bone marrow. Whilst T lymphocytes are made in the bone marrow but mature in the thymus gland in the neck. And these lymphocytes are stimulated into action when they come across antigens. Yes. Invading pathogens are recognised as foreign because they carry antigens that are different from our own. So how would the B lymphocytes respond to antigens then? B lymphocytes, with antibodies in their plasma membrane, bind to a complementary antigen. That means that each B lymphocyte will bind to a different antigen. Yes. When a B lymphocyte spots its specific antigen, the B lymphocyte divides by mitosis to make many clones of the stimulated lymphocyte. Some of these clones will differentiate into plasma cells and memory cells. Plasma cells secrete loads of antibodies specific to the antigen. Memory cells remain in the body for many years after the invading bacteria have been destroyed. If the antigen appears again, the memory cells will divide and produce many plasma cells very quickly. And then the plasma cells will make antibodies? Exactly. What about T lymphocytes? T lymphocytes are covered in receptors that bind to antigens presented by the phagocytes. Each T lymphocyte has a different receptor on its surface. When the surface of a T lymphocyte meets a complementary antigen, it binds to it. So each T lymphocyte will bind to a different antigen? Yes, and there are several types of T lymphocytes. Like T helper cells and T killer cells? Exactly. T helper cells with a complementary receptor to an antigen divide to form clones of itself. These clone T helper cells then start secreting chemicals called cytokines, which stimulate other cells to fight against the invaders. T killer cells will typically destroy a body cell displaying virus particles. What about memory cells? Yes, some of the clones made by the T lymphocytes stay in the blood as memory cells, which help the body to respond more quickly if the same antigen ever invades again. Well, thanks for that, Laura. We've covered a lot in this podcast, so well done for sticking to the end. In part two, we'll talk more on antibodies and immunity, so stay tuned for the rest of this chapter. Thanks for watching.